This is Graph and I have a super quick tutorial showing how to create a fully local chatbot with Langchain, GraphRag and GPT-40 to make a powerful agent chatbot for your business or personal use. GraphRags are less prone to hallucinate because the knowledge graphs offer more relevant, varied, engaging, coherent and reliable data to the LLM, ultimately leading to accurate and factual text generation. On Tuesday, Google announced Gemma 2, its family of open, but not open source models, with performance comparable to Meta's Alama and Mistral's open models. If this project sounds complex or difficult for you, then hey, don't worry, because it's a lot easier than you think. In this video, I will walk you through four steps to give you a rough idea of the core concepts and the methods that I use to create your graph chatbot application. Let me explain GraphRag in a stupid way. Well, to answer that, it is a technology that represents the relevance of information in a graph and can perform information, searches and generate answers based on that graph. This makes it easier to respond to even abstract queries because the graph manages the relevance of information that RAG could not read. GraphRAG uses graph database technology to search and generate information. Graph databases use nodes, points and edges, lines, to represent the relationships between information allowing data to be handled more flexibly and intuitively than traditional relational databases. This makes it possible to effectively manage complex relationships between information and improve the accuracy of search results. Wait, 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 but how does GraphRag work? But if you excuse me, I have a 58 second GraphRag explanation of how does it works. Ready? All right, start the clock. So GraphRag takes all of the advantages of the vector-based rag but stores the data in a graph database. Graph databases store additional context about what is stored. Information is stored in nodes and the edges describe relationships and links that connect the information. For example, let's consider a question about Sakura from Naruto. When trying to process an abstract query like, what are Sakura's characteristics? With RAG, even if there is external information saying, Sakura is a beautiful girl with long hair and light green eyes it may not be recognized as semantically close, resulting in an inability to provide an answer. From a human perspective, what are Sakura characteristics and a girl with long hair would make sense in a conversation. Still, RAG may not recognize this as an appropriate answer due to the lack of semantic closeness. Now, so what happens when you use graph RAG? Graph RAG creates a graph from the sentence, Sakura is a beautiful girl with long hair and light green eyes. Nodes for Sakura and girl are generated and edges are created to represent the related information such as long hair and light green eyes. When a query containing the word Sakura is given, the graph rag first searches for the Sakura node. Next, it retrieves information related to the Sakura node from the graph, allowing it to understand the relevance of the information. Therefore, graph rag can generate the expected answer by understanding the relationship between words even for abstract questions like the one mentioned earlier. GraphRag excels at modeling and querying complex relationships between entities. They are designed to efficiently handle interconnected data and perform graph-based operations such as traversing relationships, finding paths, and identifying patterns. While vector databases are designed to perform similarity searches and nearest neighbor queries efficiently, they leverage specialized indexing techniques and algorithms to retrieve vectors most similar to a given query vector quickly. Gao, buddy, you're doing the classic explainorama again. We're here to code, not write a novel. Oh, my bad, my bad. I've broken it down into four bite-sized steps. Let's install Langchain in Python. You can either install it with pip or conda. Personally, I would recommend taking advantage of Langchain's frequent releases by frequently upgrading the packages. Use the following command for this purpose. Then we need to set up a Neo4j. The easiest way is to start a free instance on Neo4j Aura, which offers cloud instances of the Neo4j database. Alternatively, you can also set up a local instance of the Neo4j database by downloading the Neo4j desktop application and creating a local database instance. Ah, ah, that sounds great. But one quick thing, how do I get the data out of the database? Well, the OpenAI functions are a great fit to extract structured information from natural language. 
The idea behind OpenAI functions is to have an LLM output a predefined JSON object with populated values. Then I define data structures to represent a knowledge graph specifying properties for each, the property, node, relationship, and knowledge graph classes. I started by overwriting the properties because I had a problem with an API. The API only allowed one object at a time, which made handling nodes and relationships difficult. To fix this, I changed the way we stored properties. Instead of using a dictionary, I used a list of property classes. Then I combined nodes and relationships into one class called Knowledge Graph. This made it easier to work with both. At the same time, I also created some helper functions to make things smoother. This function makes sure the key of each property is formatted correctly. This function changes a list of properties into a dictionary. This function changes a custom node into a base node. His function changes a custom relationship into a base relationship. Then I need to extract a knowledge graph from the text. To do this, I created a function called get extraction chain. This function helps build a chain that extracts information from the text. The function takes two optional parameters, allowed nodes and allowed reals. These parameters specify which types of nodes and relationships are allowed, making the extraction more accurate. This helps to remove ambiguities, as explained in Sakura. While the prompt tries to handle this ambiguation on its own, you don't need to specify these parameters at first. However, if ambiguities remain in the extracted results, it is better to specify allowed nodes and allowed reals. Finally, I use this function to create a structured output chain that uses the given prompt and the language model. This makes the extraction process much more effective and clear. Then I added an option to limit which node or relationship types should be extracted from the text. This feature can be very useful as you'll see in some examples. With the Neo4j connection and LLM prompt ready, I could define the information extraction pipeline as a single function. This setup streamlines the process, making it easier to extract just the information we need and improves the overall efficiency of our work. We use a large chunk size value to include as much context as possible around each sentence. This helps the core reference resolution work better. It's important to remember that the core reference step will only work if the entity and its reference appear in the same chunk. Otherwise, the LLM doesn't have enough information to link the two. For each document in the documents list, the extract and store graph function is called to extract the knowledge graph and save it to the Neo4j database. We use the TQDM library to display the progress of the processing. The entire process takes less than a few minutes. Finally, I use GraphCypher question answer chain to browse information in a knowledge graph by constructing cipher statements, similar to how SQL is used for relational databases. I've been trying out different queries, but I'm still unsure about converting them to cipher. For instance, it should handle queries like this one. Boom, we get output value as you can see there is no node named musings. Even though there's no node named musings, I hope the system can manage such queries. These days, I find searching by vectors and then fetching related information to be the most effective and practical approach. The examples I've tried so far haven't been perfect and I haven't been motivated to explore other options. Knowledge graphs are interesting, but it feels like there's still plenty of technical exploration left to do. It seems quite challenging, but I have a feeling that in the future, combining knowledge graphs with RAG could be promising. In the future, Graph Rack may become the global standard in the RAG world. I hope you enjoy this video and subscribe. I have some cool stuff coming in the next couple of weeks. See ya.